Great, great, great. Hello. Welcome back to the Luck We Had podcast. Hello. It's currently June. It's Pride Month. Uh, happy Woo! Pride Month. Woo! I actually miss Pride. <laughs> I also miss Pride. I was working. I was working. I didn't get to go. My Pride. Oh, no. I wasn't working. I was meeting Henry Winkler. That's what I was oh, doing. More important. He's Pride Month. <laughs> I did get to go see Young the Giant that night, so that was fun. Ooh. Nice. Um, I got surprise last minute free tickets from work. So That's that awesome. Was great. I have Pride this Saturday for Baltimore, but it's supposed to rain, so we'll boo, see what the fuck happens. Boo. Yeah, I was a little busy meeting um, Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd and Tom Wilson and Henry Winkler. Such a good group of people. No, for real. And I got fucking Zoe and a couple other people met um, Joe. Joe Quinn. Met Joe. That was a shit show because oh. Joe, um, he his management didn't send his passport away in time for him to get a work visa to be allowed to work in the United States. But for like the Friday of the convention, he was supposed to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He Is did not get there. Work. Yeah, he yeah, did not get paid. there. Oh, until okay. like he got to the states on saturday his his visa was not approved until sunday morning and so they or like late saturday night or whatever and so they crammed all three days of his autographs photo ops oh. everything into sunday they what? that into poor sunday. kid and so like i kind of feel bad for him no i feel yeah. really bad for him they had like upstairs was where all the autographs were and for me it was where all of the back to the future photo ops were so that christopher lloyd and michael j fox didn't have to go upstairs and downstairs oh nice. but it was where all the autographs were and the back to the future ops and then downstairs is where all the ops were but for joe in the op room they're like okay over here is your photo op and right next to it is your autograph and every we're gonna so do we like do both he's like we're gonna do this line of people for like 15 minutes then you're gonna jump over here you're gonna do this line of people for 15 minutes you're gonna jump back over here you're gonna do this line of people God, for 15 minutes damn and then he Honestly, like ran up and did a trip. Or, yeah no wonder like, he looked miserable in so many of the pics and stuff did he? <laughs> yeah. I, didn't yeah. see, I didn't see anything he but like, looked like I don't know, he did he not nice. want to be there which is like understandable because you just had He's to probably do jet lagged. yeah three days of work in one day you had so much fucking drama with the embassies and like all that yeah. shit for you and just flying to have from to... the uk to to new jersey to philadelphia that's it's like brutal. the hell of a jet lag i like just did yeah something similar so yeah yeah damn but zoe said he was really nice and he he complimented her artwork because she got him to sign the uh oil painting that she did mm. of him. oh nice and then That's my good. friend a friend of mine was at the convention and only had t- a ticket for saturday the con was actually really good about like if you only had a ticket for friday if you only had a ticket for saturday but you have something with joseph quinn we will give you free admission to sunday oh, and fuck. transfer oh, all your nice. stuff over so then you get to see yeah. everything on sunday yeah yeah for like for your inconvenience. Yeah, they're like, you You will have free admission, like, or we will transfer your admission over so that you can come in on Sunday as well as, like, the Friday that you were here for oh, so shit. that you can do your Joseph Quinn op. They just, like, rearrange the time of day that you would have gotten to do it. Huh. Oh, that's nice. That's actually yeah. really nice. But also, I would feel bad for all the people who, like, were only there for a Friday or a Saturday and then, like, yeah. they had to leave before Sunday or something like that. I know that happened to me before he with, like, a convention. his management. To That's be the third time they've done that to him. Yeah, he's yeah. Missed, he missed a Comic Con for it, and he missed like Fallon because like, of you that. would think you would think they would know the drill by now. He should probably Bruh. fire. And especially his like with his like up and coming of being so popular, like you cannot be fucking faulty with that. You're gonna cost this kid like jobs and stuff like that. And you only not have just to, him, but like, other people like tons of money. You yeah. only have to reapply for that visa every like three to six months. So like. Oh know. really? It's, so it should yeah. just it should just always be renewed. Yeah, right. Unless if you that's how it works, to rene- you have like to manually be some, like, renew. No, no, no. Like, like, but that. they should just do it every six months or whatever. Like, it should just be a thing. Even if he doesn't have anything booked, like I just hit my mic. But even if he doesn't have anything booked, it's like you never know what's gonna come up. Yeah, but like my friend was at the convention, only had a ticket for Saturday, and messaged me and said, "Hey, your sister really loves Joseph Quinn, right?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they were like, I have this op that I'm not going to use. I'll send it to you. And you can, your sister Is that how she it. got the solo one? No, that she that was her, the one that she bought. I gave her the other one so that her and all of her friends could have one together with him. How many people did they allow in a photo op? Because at Supernatural Cons, you can only have four. fucking two, up to two people. No, now you can have up to four. Oh, uh, dude, I remember back in the day of Supernatural Con, if you wanted four people in there, you needed two tickets. Oh, wait, you know what? You're right. That's still true. Yeah. Also, it cost me less to get an autograph 
to get an autograph from Michael J. Fox, an autograph with Christopher Lloyd and an autograph with Tom Wilson, than it cost for like just my Jensen and Misha photo. And like, no, I love Jensen and Misha. I love them dearly. But like Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, they're legends. Creation Con is a scam and will always be a scam. No, absolutely. Whenever I've gone to more mainstream conventions that aren't Creation Net, I've been able to fucking, when I met Skeet, that shit was so cheap. When I met like so many other people, but no, Creation Con just likes to fucking milk all the elderly adult women of their money because that's how you see a lot at the con is like middle-aged women that they just fucking pull all the money out of them for all the ops and shit like that but anyways i'm glad fucking philly con was awesome because it seemed like you guys had a great fucking time i saw all your photos like it looked like it was a really good convention oh my god henry winkler is the sweetest man on planet earth that photo of you guys was so so nice with his little blanket i was crying laughing at that when i was standing in line for his autograph he at some points would just walk into the line and start shaking hands with us is that the video you sent us of him just literally just like talking to random people yeah he's like hello thank you for waiting i'm worth the wait i got (laughs) photos i got posters i got a jersey like he was just hogging his wares i'm trying to think (laughs) that was like right before the finale of barry aired i'm pretty sure it was right after yeah, oh, right, right, right after. after. Yeah, Damn, he after. was catching strays, probably. <laughs> yeah, and they were actually really good about, like, my photo op with him was at 3 o'clock on Sunday. And then they emailed me and they went, just kidding, it's at 1 o'clock. And they, like, sent me an updated PDF of the ticket with, like, the correct time on it. And they were really good about, like, Damn, Christina shout Ricci. Out to this convention. Are you joking? Yeah. If you had a like an op or an autograph with someone who ended up canceling, they made it really easy to exchange it. They made it really easy to get a refund. Like that's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's, they were awesome. Yeah. yeah, one flaw with Monster Mania is that you can't get refunds. You can only like exchange your photo ops and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it seems like Philly Con really has their shit together. Maybe I'll go next year because that yeah, literally that's a more diverse. Thing- that's the most diverse group of fucking actors I've ever yeah. heard being at, like, not a little convention, but, like, a small enough Dude, thing. Like, like Arrow and Felicity Smoke and Danielle Panamaker, they were all there. And uh, the guy that played, um, oh my god, the other guy on Arrow. The one that, Steven like, Jensen hangs out Amel? with? No, not Stephen Mel. He was there. But, uh, Dig- uh, Diggle. Diggle. The guy that played Diggle. He was also there. So, like, four- Arrow. Four people from the Arrowverse were there. The Lex Luthor and Superman from Smallville, who's he's also uh, Samuel Winchester on the Winchesters. Um, oh, the su- guy from Smallville. And like the three main characters from Back to the Fucking Future. Steve from Blue's Clues was there. Uh, the, the little Jody no Benson, way. the little mermaid was there. Like Lena, looks like we're pulling up next year. Right? Like, I guess I have to go. <laughs> oh, the voice of voice of one of the guys from one of the guys from Spider Verse was there. One of the kids from Spider Verse was there. My, uh, the guy who plays not Miles. not the guy who plays Miles Morales, really. I think so. Yeah, and it was the premiere of the movie weekend. God, why can I not I remember? Shamik Moore. Shameek yeah, Moore. it was Shamik Moore. It was Shamik Moore. I remember. Moore I watched. There. I the first movie I ever saw him in, I think, was Dope because Blake Anderson was in that. Well, I watched it before I even knew who Blake was, which is kind of a trip. But yeah. I also don't know if you know the the show I Zombie. Uh, I but do remember it. She I was there. Oh, the okay. lead. She was there. Like, fucking huh. crazy, Everyone this lineup. There. No, literally, I'm pulling up next year. Do you know how much the weekend there. pass was? $89. Yeah, when you guys, I, when I was Seriously? visiting you guys before, <laughs> the only reason I didn't fucking go is that this is the month I'm moving. And I was like, I cannot spend extra cash right now. Yeah. Because yeah, I had to pay seriously. double rent and a security I'm deposit. I'm so broke right now. It's not <laughs> even Dude, funny. Me too. I don't um, want to move. I'm that like was working, amazing. I'm working two jobs, but one of them is unpaid. Um, Lame. But I get paid in free concert tickets, so... That's kind of sick. It is kind of sick. I got tickets to Metric at the end of the month. Well, okay. I saw not, your post have, on my way. <laughs> they have they have not been... Um, they have not been transferred to me yet, but I got verbal confirmation that I will be getting tickets to Metric at the, the end of this month. That's awesome. Nice. Um... Yeah. yeah, we were also talking about Sunny and how I just need them to let Mac and Dennis fuck at least to just get it out of it's their system. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, I'm I'm like so over the Mac and Dennis like conspiracy. But I will tell you, so this Frank versus Rush episode that's coming up. Yeah. Is that the next so, episode? Yeah. So Frank like goes to a so 
Evan, I don't know how much you've heard, but it's like Frank is going to a chess tournament. He's playing against some like famous Russian grandmaster. I guess mm-hmm. he's really good for some reason. Character I great. haven't I haven't seen anything about the new episode. I only watched the most recent episode last night. Okay. Um and so Charlie tags along with him and Charlie gets into his like America get up. Like mm-hmm. so um, America oh, Charlie the, comes back. I'm going to catch some mess. I'm going to ride stuff. an eagle. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis shows up to the tournament at some point, but meanwhile, Dennis finds out that Mac has a long distance boyfriend. And I guess <gasps> I is it the, is the guy from is, Ireland? I don't know. His name's Johnny. I don't remember if that was the guy from Ireland. I don't know either. Everyone's hoping that it's gonna be like Ryan Reynolds came here. <laughs> oh my god, that's <laughs> so be funny. So funny, but so I, I guess, don't think they would do that. Because that would have that would make Dennis have a mental breakdown about not being the hottest man that Mac knows anymore. Like- well, apparently. <laughs> Um, something, something about like them talking about this and Frank gets inspired or like says like a homophobic joke to Mac after he reveals some sort of like dating habit he has. I'm assuming it's like something like ass play related Mm -hmm. Yeah. because then reportedly it gives Frank an idea about how to win the chess tournament. Oh, (gasps) that's. There, that was a thing that actually yeah. happened. Did you not? Yeah, that's the thing. A like, guy that, that they wore were using... a, like a dildo, like a vibrator up his ass that w- somebody was controlling with like a remote, like Morse code, so that he knew what moves to make at a chess tournament. Oh, really? Some, yeah, someone else, that was someone else actually theorized like that a... Frank was just going to put pieces up there. But um, no, it's actually like a thing that happened with like that one grandmaster who's been going viral. They had a theory because he kept winning that he had something in his butt that was telling him what moves to make or like someone from afar was watching to give like more intel on like the person's next move but that's yeah, so funny so that i that's guess what they i guess do. they're that's, gonna do that but yeah so dennis gets quote-unquote irritated with max new boyfriend and decides to teach dennis or decides to teach mac and d his dentist system for men Oh, so that's yeah. what they spend the episode doing is like that's what the clip is from where d's like under the table and she's like i'm grabbing your dick like the, from oh, the trailer. I, I haven't seen the promo oh okay um so that's that's what's supposed to happen but then cool. people are people are taking it a step further and they're like oh my god like dennis has a dentist system for men like he so he's queer and it's like no, he no, just, like, reversed the dentist yeah, system for yeah. women. Like, he just and, like, changed his it. his whole thing with Mac is he likes being adored. So he's right. going to let Mac do that. Yeah, like Mac fucking cherishes the fucking ground he walks on. Of course he's going to keep him around. Right. So then, so, yeah. That is why people are excited. In it's Mac just going to be any old episode. Like, that's exactly what happened when we were going through our Mac Den phase, like, a couple years ago, is that oh, we, I would, know. we would look at the promos, we would read the descriptors, we would have the most craziest fucking theories in the entire world, and then the episode would premiere, and it was just a normal episode Dennis of Sunny. Is the bar. The one exception... Is the bar the one, <laughs> the one exception was the run of, like, Cure or Hate Crime ptsd no, that was sick though like like the four episodes and then ending with like dennis's double life was bonkers no that was like how to be. dare they do that the except they that threw cricket's tail in the middle there but that was just that like, was i remember we break. were so mad about a cricket's tail because we were like we're gonna get some like small mac dennis in it and then we got oh yeah it was like it was Cricket it was POV. pure hate crime ptsd gang tens bar yes. and then cricket's tail because cricket's tail took place at the same time as tens bar apparently um, or it did. I mean, it did. There's scenes in the episode with it. And then Dennis's double life there at the end. And it was like, what the hell just happened? It was crazy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that well, was they, our 15 minutes of ranting yeah. about other television and Wait, stuff at the time. I just the- have to throw in. Well, Evan, <laughs> remind me again. You are not a Righteous Gemstones enjoyer. Never seen it. You don't go here? Okay. Never mind. Never been down that road. Everybody else who doesn't go here, you need to enroll. <laughs> you need to go here now. <laughs> like I am so busy with Star Trek. I am now simultaneously I know, I know. I watching three, th- four Star Treks. I'm simultaneously watching four, two from the 90s and two that are currently airing. No, for real. <laughs> All I but watch anybody, is Twitch. anybody who's jumping, anybody who's struggling with like succession loss, yeah. success yeah. with suck berry loss, Me. Righteous Gemstones is where you want to be. I just watch Chris Melberger on Twitch and Julian. 
I also started watching actually for the first time Family Ties, which is the Michael J. Fox sitcom from mm. the late from the eighties. Oh my I god, watched, it's so I watched fucking an ep- good. I watched an episode of that for my TV history class. I watched the one where he like accidentally gets a- not even accidentally, but like gets addicted to Adderall. That's a good episode. Yeah, Tom Hanks plays his uncle. Like okay, f- back when Big came out, like young Twinkie Tom Hanks. Like <laughs> I love Big, great yeah. movie. That's oh my god, true. so he was good. A twink. Anyway, welcome back to the Luck We Had, a shameless recap podcast. <laughs> Tom Hanks is a twink. <laughs> he, he like look, you know how Colin Hanks looks right now? Yeah. Like that. That's what he looked Damn. like. <laughs> um, but hey everybody, it's a shameless recap podcast. That was our ranting about other stuff at the top <laughs> of the episode. Uh, I think we're mostly just trying to distract ourselves because we this is the watch season five this. finale. I watched this episode yesterday while packing and I wanted to freak out. Like I don't even know how we're going to get through this. Uh, this um, is the last episode in the single digit seasons that I have watched to completion. Consecutively. Uh, which is crazy. Yeah, like I haven't watched a full episode from seasons six through nine, which is buzzed no, That's crazy. literally insane. And me and Lena over here, we're just like going through it with these fucking seasons. Because they're, they're freaking crazy. They're like, good. They're they're good. The, after after season seven, I can't say that they're good, but um, season six, six and Ooh. six and seven are yeah. They're oh, good. it like yeah. lined up just right that like seven and eight were airing while I was like smoking a cigar, a fine whiskey. It's just like you just sit back and go, damn. Seven and eight were airing while I was a junior and senior in college, and I was like, mm, I would rather not spend my time suffering through this. Actually. <laughs> Me and Lena um, were still legal children. <laughs> no, literally. Literally still like minor. eighth and ninth grade. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, it's Shane's Isn't it weird podcast. when you get reminded of like our age difference? Yeah, I'm gonna be we all 28, a... babe. <laughs> I'm gonna be 23. I'll be 21 in like a month. Woo woo! Oh, that's Yeah, I'm baby-fied, so... <laughs> yeah, damn, Amanda. <laughs> God, okay. Well. I've just known Amanda for so long, it doesn't feel weird. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, we also have known Lena the same amount of time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I don't want to talk about this episode. No, I'm dude, literally... I literally hate the show. <laughs> what the like, hell? Just, oh, we just have to jump right in. All right, well, John fucking Wells. Yeah, wait, I'm Amanda. I'm Evan. <laughs> I'm Lena. And this is the season five finale of Shameless. Buckle the fuck up, everybody. It's episode 512, Love Songs in the Key of Gallagher. It aired on April 5th, 2015, which was eight years ago. Ooh. Uh, I remember was... that. <laughs> oh, God. That was like the first episode I watched live, I think. I caught up like right in time for it. Oh, my God. Oh, my condolences. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. Um... Also, whoever came up with this title, Emmy. Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> it was, good title. I love this title. I'm like, yeah. okay, okay. Well, because it's all about it's all about relationships, ones that end, ones that begin, and it does actually mesh real like the themes of the episode. Like it's sex and love in the whole episode. Like mesh oh, yeah. really well together. I hate to give John Wells props. I hate to do that because he maybe wrote this he didn't episode. come up with the title. Who knows? <laughs> no, but like the the structure of the episode actually works. Oh really yeah, it well. is a great episode. It's annoying. Uh, but yeah, John Wells wrote it. And the, he's we know this we know this fucking what guy. a bitch. It was directed directed by Christopher Chucklack. I'll never pronounce his name right. I uh, thought it was Chu. Just I thought I thought there wasn't a second C in there. I thought it was just like Chulak. Oh, I've truly Is no Chuck idea. Lack? I don't know. I didn't anyway. check. I could. I couldn't tell you. This is the fourth of eleven shameless episodes he directed. Well, only the fourth. Jesus. Uh, he did 410 Liver, I Hardly Know Her, 501 Milk of the Gods, 509 Carl's for Sentencing, and this one. So th- he does three in season five. And then in season six, he does 601, I Only Mess Her When I'm Breathing, 604, Going Once, Going Twice, and 612, Familia Su- Supra Gal- Glorious Omnia. Uh, in, wow, he does like three episodes a season. He does 701 Hireth, 705 Own Your Shit, 709 Ouroboros, and then the finale of the series, Father Frank Full of Grace. Damn. He also does Southland, Longmire, Animal Kingdom. He's very busy. It's probably, maybe that's, 
like Emmy Emmy directed an episode or two of Animal Kingdom. I wonder if she had the hookup through Chris. Uh, the synopsis of this episode. It's actually better synopsis than some of the other ones. Fiona reunites with Gus after his tour, but is torn by the fact that her friend that her friendly feelings for Sean have turned to love. Plus, Frank has his own love struggles as he works to keep Bianca happy in Costa Rica. Clearly not in the synopsis, a certain redheaded Gallagher. Um, they sort of avoided that at all costs. Well, wonder where he is right now. Mm-hmm. Who knows? With who? Couldn't tell you. Also, nothing about Lip and nothing about Kevin V in the in the synopsis. And nothing Lip, about Lips. I don't think, if I remember correctly, Lips arc is not as important in this last right episode now he's because just we we pick teacher. up basically in the same place. Yeah, I know, but he's still seeing her in the beginning of season six. Yeah. So he's just, he kind of ends the season at like a stasis. He's just chilling. The chillest Gallagher. But the right previous now. Reality- right now. <laughs> For the season. The previously on is part of that like dream sequence of when Debbie was talking about how they were going to torture Sammy. It's Sammy with the car battery attached to her nipples with Mickey and Debbie like standing next to Shout her. Shout out to practical effects because I can't imagine what the fuck they clipped her nipples with without it hurting. Like, cause you, they obviously didn't use real like. Or maybe they were fake nipples. <gasps> maybe they were like prosthetic nipples over That's her own nipples. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, previously on Shameless, oh, also absent from the synopsis is the character, the other redheaded Gallagher that I don't care about. That's what we thought you met at first, and then I went, wait, we don't care about her. This is, like, Debbie's, like, point of no return for me. God. Derek and Debbie are having sex, and so is Lip and his married professor, and so is Frank with his cancer-ridden doctor girlfriend. Like, even the synopsis is like, they're fucking, and they're fucking, and they're fucking. Uh, Mickey and Debbie are sure that they killed Sammy and then shoved her body in a moving crate. Ian was released from military prison and ran away with Monica and Fiona and Sean are getting flirty. I want to beat Fiona's ass. Yeah. Well, someone's doing a version of that when we open the episode. Uh, she <laughs> Fiona is getting fucked by her husband Gus who is back in town she's well you know he's mad as hell too (laughs) like come on and she loves a good hate fuck like they're they are laying it down all she does yo (laughs) and see I don't mind a good like explicit sex scene if it like serves like the scene like there's like a purpose here yeah that shows us that they're talking that they're fucking that they're like connected back with each other that she didn't like show up into town and she ghosted him like served a purpose uh she asks if he hooked up with any groupies on the road he says no they're not worth the worry of an std like that's the reason he gave (laughs) and then he starts smoking and she's like i don't know you smoked he's like i smoke on the road i'll quit in a few days and he's so sexy i'm sorry he's so yeah he's so good i love gus apparently when, in the last episode he texted her about a gig that he was working and we were to assume that she ignored that to spend time with sean no she went to the gig she went to the gig that he was playing and uh the last song in the set was called betrayal Ooh, uh, i wonder who inspired that <laughs> he wrote it quick as hell then <laughs> she and she goes ouch he's like i wrote the music my buddy wrote the lyrics and she's like yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah sure guess and then they fuck Well, again. the F word he takes full credit for. Oh, so. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Uh, they're fucking again. And so is Lip and his professor girlfriend. I she's love got her. a. Yeah. She's Eileen. hot. Eileen. Uh, Eileen. She's a MILF. She's MILF material. It's good for her. She has him tied up and she's waking him up by whispering and licking his ear. Yeah, this part's weird, though. And she pours some wine on his chest and licks it up. And then he sees her husband sitting in the corner of the room Just... watching them. <laughs> and he's like, uh, she's like, is that okay? And he's like, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna fuck you. Like. Cocked. <laughs> Dude. Cocked. He's just like sitting there like. Just watch. It's so. I weird. mean, he's he, yeah, he's getting cuckolded. Like, yeah, it's he, that's whatever, probably but his entire. That's in, probably the entire base. That's of his fetish. That's his whole thing. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's like lip, Consent, please. lip, like. Uh, How old is lip in this? Like nineteen, twenty. He's legal. He's twenty, I think. Yeah, I know he's legal, but I'm just like, just imagine, just like hey, she's like easily doctor. in her forties. Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, doctor. Doesn't she have a son? 
Yes. Doesn't he? Doesn't he meet oh, the son shit. at one point? Yeah, you meet him next season. In the when next Cliff's season, but he's yeah, she's stuff. got a son. But he's, he's I think he's, I think he's Lip's age. Yeah. What? Yeah. And then, but then Lip literally says to her, like, don't you find this weird then? And she's like, no. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, this episode is sad right away. Mickey is fucking a woman in his and Ian's bedroom because Boo. he's sad. Boo. Ugh, tomato, Boo. Tomato. They always fell back on that whenever he was upset. He would just fuck a woman and I'm like, come on. And like- I wrote a little thing. The thesis Andy. of this episode with his fucking around seems to be that he keeps fucking women as a pre- as a way to pretend he could be who he was and a way to convince himself like he's not cheating and he's not moving on. Like it's it's him holding out a little bit of hope that Ian's going to answer the phone. Ian's going to come home. And it's not until later in the episode when he's like, OK, this this is over now that he go he like finds a guy in the park and goes to fuck him. Like, I don't know. Thoughts? Huh. I totally didn't even think about the cruising. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, he's like taking himself back, wallowing in that kind of like pain and trauma of like the Svetlana situation. Yeah. And like what happened between season three and four, like he's, he's revisiting that. And I, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think he's hoping that like at some point, like Ian's going to return and then it'll be like, you know, same series of events. I also just think it's probably, there's probably some shame about it. Like, he's ashamed that him and Ian, like, failed. Like, his being yeah. gay, that all these risks he took, like, didn't pay off. So now he feels yeah. like he has to punish himself by, like, yeah. having sex with women. Might as well go back to being the thing that daddy will approve of. And, like, exactly. Every time it happens, he has the most, like, fucking blank stare on his goddamn face. Yeah. Like, he's so dissociating through the entire thing. And he can't even get hard, apparently. The girl's like, this. it's been an hour. She's, like, so she, cute, like, though. She's like, I'm getting bored. <laughs> I know. Every girl that he, like, finds to hook up with seems nice. Yeah, and I'm like... like <laughs> I know. I'm like, how did... Like, how did you pull that? Bro, he pulls. Like, it's not even funny. It's like, how? <laughs> like, like look at that guy. Like, blonde girl, but then there is that yeah. ugly, like, ginger... The lady from the bar. The lady yeah. from the bar, but that was, but that was a lady from the bar. But yeah. it's like... Girl, how do you pull? Yeah. Yeah. She walked into that house and said, I'm going to take another step in. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, she leaves the room and then he bashes his head into the wall of the picture of Ian that he was oh like. Oh my God. That he did the same thing to when he was Beat like head. masturbating in the mirror. Literal blockhead. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, dude, you're so crazy. I still always laugh about that fucking video Lena I sent you like maybe like five years ago and it's the mickey milkovich is a comedian and it's just a laugh track over every sad mickey scene and it's like the laugh track of him jerking it in the bathroom and then punching the mirror it is the funniest video in the entire world and they deleted it but dude because that's literally just what's sitting next to me watching these episodes is like i am slapping my knee because <laughs> i'm like because i've had enough I, I, I the first couple times I watched it, obviously I was like, "This is so sad." But now that I've had enough separation from it, I'm like, "Girl, why would I'm you like, do that?" You, you dummy. <laughs> like I know it's coming, and so I'm like, "I'm like, girl, why would you do that?" Dude, this is embarrassing. <laughs> like that is not healthy. No. Anyway, Ian is on the road with Monica. They're in the cab of a truck while they h- hitchhike south. Uh, and in the Gallagher house, Debbie is woken up by Derek getting dressed to leave. What? What's up, Lena? There's a song later in, I think it's later in this the episode, um, that's really good that I have on my playlist, but it's called it's called Where the Ocean Is by Shadow Shadow, but I don't think it's in this part of the episode. I think it's when they're in a different truck, okay, hiking. Maybe when they are getting closer to her yeah, because it's like it's yeah. nighttime and Ian's like looking at these lights and these like pictures on the truck ceiling or something. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's later. Um. In the Gallagher house, Debbie is woken up by Derek getting dressed to leave. She tells him she loves him, and he kisses her and says it back seemingly for the first time. Ugh. Boo, boo. Boo. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they just had sex for the first time, right? Like, he spent the night. I don't think this was the first time. I think this is the first time he spent the night. Because they fucked for the first time in the fir- the episode prior, but they, it's yeah. been a is couple this... of days in between. Well, and when they fuck for the first time prior, isn't there, um, like, there's boy in your bed? Or is that, that's pre her getting that's birth next. control, that's right? That's next. That's next. Yeah. There's boy in your bed? Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. episode Oh, right, and she's like, well, you have a boy was, in your bed. Yep. Yeah, uh... <laughs> Episode prior was birth control. I'm on the pill, but it hasn't been 48 hours. Right, 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 right. Yeah. 
Rot. And then she decides to baby trap him. Um, Rich. also waking up, Frank. Also, all the Frank scenes in this episode were gorgeous. Yeah. Like, all of them were beautiful. He served, <laughs> they both served cunt. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, him and Bianca. It's like, okay, Frank, I you were looking kind of good. Love Bianca. I love yeah. Bianca. Bill said, put me on a beach. And that's where I'm filming the episode. I'm going to be clean and in swim shorts on a beach the whole time. And he ate it up. <laughs> and he knows how not to wear a shirt. Uh, he's on a beach in Costa Rica with his dying girlfriend. Bianca is out staring at the beach and he goes to sit with her. He is so in love with her. He's so in love with her. And like, again, it's because it's because Mo- it's Monica because he's seeing Monica when he looks at her. And he's so like he's a bad partner and he's a bad person. But every once in a while, like when Sheila was at her lowest, when Monica was at her lowest, when Bianca's at her lowest, he's there for them. He steals from them, but then he's there for it's, them. Yeah, it's probably also because he knows that he's going to lose her. Yeah. yeah. Like, like even though he doesn't really, like, process it until she's gone that he's lost her. Yeah. Like, he, he knows that he will, so he doesn't even, like, get the opportunity to be a shithead yet. Yeah. He's kind to them for selfish reasons, but he is kind to them. But then it becomes yeah. kind of genuine a little bit. Like, before he realizes that... Because that's the thing is, like, when he's always, like, kind to his partners at first, and it's usually selfish reasons, and then it's a little genuine. But then he just stops because he's like, oh, I'm in it for the, this is, like, the long haul, right? Like, yeah. but with this, it's like he knows that she's going to die at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he could, he could take care of Monica because he knew she'd always need him. He will take care of Bianca because, like that he likes he likes being important once sheila got better he was fully checked out um but uh, it's an interesting dynamic with frank and relationships Yeah, because it's like their like struggles are like what make him thrive yeah he likes to be needed he's selfish he's narcissistic this and this loss is going to crush him and you can like from this first episode this scene of this episode you can tell it's going to crush him uh fiona comes home to debbie giving liam cup of noodles for breakfast because they don't have any groceries in the house and Fiona's like, why? Debbie's like, well, Sammy was doing all the shopping and now Sammy's gone. And Fiona's like, oh, I will go to the grocery store. Yes, Miss Girl, you are their guardian. Mm, It's not like you have to control five people and feed their goddamn mouths. There are two kids in this house now. Two. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I mean, it's like she hasn't even been home. (laughs) Like, And Fiona says she spent the night with Gus and Debbie's like, okay. And Fiona's, Fiona's like, girl, don't act like everything's all right. Like, let's everything's weird right now they're like they're they're being sisterly with each other but they're also being like completely contradictory to one another or, yeah i mean because it's like if debbie were to try to say shit like um fiona like that's messy or whatever fiona would be like oh well you don't get to say shit because you're like some 14 year old little bitch like she would yeah. so say that to her and then debbie would be like well at least i have like a boyfriend like <laughs> i'm in like a healthy relationship or whatever yeah. even though she's not yeah, because, like, Fiona says, like, Gus is back, I went to a show, I stayed the night, and Debbie's like, what about Sean, you know, the, the good friend? And then Fiona's like, yeah, he's just a friend. So Debbie's like, okay, well, we need to go visit Carl, so does husband Gus have a car, or should we ask good friend Sean to drive us all up to Judy again? <laughs> like, whoa! She's so real for that. <laughs> she got him on that. I'll give Debbie She's not funny, one. I'm sorry. She's got some, some bangers of lines. Well, because it's episode. like, because it's also like, girl, you're right. Like, it's, it's hard, it's it is sometimes so hard to hate Debbie it, at this point, like, before she yeah. goes past this, like, point of no return. Because I'm like, man, a lot of people in her life really did fail her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, as hard as they tried, they really did fail her or just, like, ignored, like, warning signs of things. And yeah. that's why she turned out that way. But she's still at the point where it's like, girl, you're kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, girl, yeah, you stole a baby when you were, like, 12 years old. But, like, come on. But that and, was like the characterization yeah. is consistent with her of like she walked a doll around like it was a real baby. She wants she a baby. Stole a baby. She really liked She's helping been out on with that Karen's baby, baby. Grind since fucking season one with Liam. Yeah. Like it's just like like she always wanted a kid, and I think I I think it's because she, well obviously it's because she wanted to like be a better mother than she had, and then Fiona of course gets gets like her pride as her because she's like well I was basically your mother and I wasn't good enough. And it's like no because you weren't supposed to be a mother you were yeah a sister who was forced into a mother role you were a but then one year old woman forced to raise four kids 
It was yeah, like just you did your so... best, but you were ultimately a child when you were raising me. Yeah. The more I think about Debbie, the more it is kind of tragic, though, because I'm like, it is so sad that you did end up just like your mother and your yep. father. Like, it's just, it's like, girl, you tried so hard to not, but then like you just, you did. She got the worst of both of them. Yeah. yeah. Besides like the like mental like health th- and like the alcoholism, she did get the worst of both of them. Yeah. Um. Sad. Anyway, but tragic. Still hate Debbie. <laughs> still hate her still hate her but it is pretty tragic we are the dead because you club. are you are ultimately responsible for the choices you make in your life um v comes v comes in the back door and complains about svet still being in the house and then she confirms that she and kev are like trying to be together again and like again just like there was that nice moment of debbie and fiona being sisters there's like john wells always comes in and is like hey do you remember that v and fiona are friends like let's have <laughs> them have a conversation maybe we forget so they do have to remind us because they don't show that much often. Rarely. Yeah. So rarely. <laughs> and it doesn't hey, and it doesn't get any better, Amanda. Like yeah. the next two seasons. We, they only grow farther apart. At one point they have a really, really bad fight. They have like such a bad fight. Is that what season says? It's like yeah, fight? it's like half a season long or something. Like it's a long fight. Yeah, like a feud, like not talking, like it's really bad and annoying. But like in this uh, scene, V like s- spots a hickey on Debbie's neck and she's like, have we had the birds and the bees talk? And Fiona's like, she's on the pill. Like it's a whole downloader on what's happening, what was happening in the A plot while she was over in the B plot situation. And V says Svet is only staying with them until they get a new bed for the apartment above the alibi. And that she's like, it's actually kind of nice to have the help with, with the girls in the house. She's like, I will admit she's good with kids. And then Fiona sends Debbie out to school and she's like, can you drop Liam off and pick him up from school? She's like, you mean like I've been doing every day for two months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I can handle that. Also, I want to age check Svetlana. She's only like, what, 21, 22? I think she, mid-20s, maybe. Um, yeah, she's, she's a little older than Mickey, but she's not 19 when that the old. bad thing happens. Was she? Well, and in shameless years, she could have aged. Because Mick- Mandy, like, Oh, no, Mandy's like her. some 19 year old whore or something. Yeah. yeah. But, like, in shameless years, she could have aged four years. Sure she could have aged one year. She, it, could, she could be, she could be 21, 22 right now. Yeah. Because, well, Isadora Logically. was like 30. Isadora easily late, late 20s. Late 20s. Yeah. But Dan Slay Svetlana being set up for life at 21. I'd, I'd, I'd join that train. She Sorry. had some good aspirations too. She was like, I just want to own a Quiznos. Like, I'm obsessed with her. I know. She literally was like, mm, not living with Baby Snatcher. And she was like, and they were like, yeah. say less. Oh, v fills Fiona in on Kev fucking around with the co-eds and Svetlana. And Fiona fills V in about Ian running away with Monica. And like, like I said, it's really nice to have like a moment of, hey, remember that they're friends? And then Ian and Monica get out of the truck at some roadside diner. He tells her he doesn't have any money. And she's like, oh, she's like, they didn't give you any money, anything. The army sent you out without a dime. It's like, yeah, he was arrested. Like, this is jail, Pookie. (laughs) (laughs) You don't get money when you get out of prison. Not handouts. She's like, it's okay. She looks over and sees some truckers. She's like, um, I I got money. Go inside. And then she goes over to the truckers and you think for a moment she's going to do a little some something for the money. But then she sees a guy, goes behind the truck with him and comes out like three seconds later so even even ian's like okay well she couldn't have she couldn't have been doing stuff so what the fuck is this anyway back in literal paradise uh <laughs> where frank where is, are they there are they outside I, of the u.s they're in mexico okay i think they're in mexico uh frank is making breakfast for bianca and she's like i'm that not hungry it's uh, so pretty and so cute like i would love to live on a beach like that are you joking yeah it's gorgeous. It's really, really beautiful. It's shot really beautifully, too. And, like, going from, like, beautiful, sunny, sunset, beachy vibes to, like, gray Chicago mm-hmm. is, like, so jarring. Oh, they wanted to have fun with that. They were like, let's go. <laughs> C- cinematography department was like, let's freaking go. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's the finale. We're going all out. I wonder where they went to film the beach scenes because they actually are Probably. on the beach a couple times. Right, it could have, it could, well, they film half the time in LA, so it's like, it, they could have just been oh, yeah. fucking in just Cali. Fucking it's Santa somewhere Monica in LA. Cali. Like, yeah. Southern, Southern California, yeah. They could have been, like, in freaking Orange County or something. <laughs> yeah. She wants to get drunk and buy a gun. <laughs> Good for her. Woo! So uh, back, and then we go back to the diner. Monica and Ian chowing down on way too much food. They ordered basically the entire menu. Oh, it all looks and, so good, though. I haven't had diner food in forever. God, diner all the diners slaps. by me suck recently. Like, the diner I went to with Amanda and, like, Zoe. Mm-hmm. Oh, my 
God, I Nifty crave 50s. that burger every goddamn day. No, for day. real. Get me to a Coney right now. <laughs> Jersey, right baby. Now. We got diners everywhere. Uh, They're chowing down. They ordered everything. And she's like, I want, like, strawberry syrup. And she's ordering everything. She's like, apple like, pie a la mode. And he's like, hey, uh, can you pay for this? And she's like, yeah, I can pay for it. He's like, so I don't have to, like, run out the back door. And she went, what are you talking about? He's like, remember when I was six years old and you made me dine and dash and, like, climb out the window of a bathroom and I, like, got a cut? And she's like, huh, I remember that. And he's like, babe, that was traumatizing. I, what? <laughs> yeah. He also tells it, like, it's just, like, it's like a silly little, not, like, a silly little story, but he's just like, it's just a thing that happened. Yeah. Like, you remember and she's this? like, oh, we had good times. And, like, that's what you thought the point of that story was. He's like, was. right. <laughs> and he's like, hey, what did you do with that trucker to get the money for this? And she's like, I sold him something. Okay. And then the phone rings, and it's Mickey. And she rejects the call. And she's like, fuck him. You don't need him. Boo. You need people who understand Boo. you. Boo. Yeah. And she, like, gazes at him. I really do like when these two, like, actors have scenes together. It's really Because good. it's also, like... I do get where they're coming from in in trying in pushing Mickey away too. Like it's like I do understand and I do understand that they are also the only two who like really understand each other. Yeah. But it is really really hard to watch. I like don't know how much of my rant to save till the, I think I'm going to save it to the end of this cuz like I have so many things to say about the trajectory of Mickey in this episode. Um she gazes at him and she's like, you are so beautiful. You're a beautiful man. I did fucking good making you. She's right. She's right. She was spinning. Yeah. But also <laughs> I hate when like that's like a thing to like kind of like make you like stay with someone when you don't want like the, the manipulation of like, I did so good at making you like, shut up. You yeah. abandoned me. Yeah. But like, and he is a sucker for like, sometimes you just want a nice word from your mom. Right. Like it's and, like, like it's your mommy. Uh, at Patsy's, Fiona is in the weeds. Talk about diners. She is in the weeds and things with Sean are weird. This bitch is always in the weeds. Like, <laughs> every single episode we've seen her in, she's behind. Uh, she tells him Gus is back and he's very polite and kind about it. Kinder than he should be. Kinder than she deserves. And she asks about his son's move. And she's like, "Your son, he's doing okay? And he's like, yeah, he's all right. And like things are just kind of like that. The very surface level for them. Back at college, Lip gets back to his dorm and finds Amanda, his girlfriend, uh, hiding out there. They have like an open thing, I think. Yeah. Well, because she's like, she's like, I let Muff eat me out like a bunch of times. So. Yeah. And she's currently hiding from Muff in her apartment. Uh, Because, because of course it's the crazy lesbian roommate and not the selfish straight girl who. Like, who let her eat her out yeah, and yeah. probably said very probably actually said nice things to her to make her keep doing it like yeah let's be for real here <laughs> yeah she's a, a manipulative, manipulative bitch. person <laughs> same brain cell but you said it nicer than i did and then she, but she does <laughs> she does make good points about the major power imbalance between the professor and lip in their relationship and he ignores those very many good points and tells her, you can keep hiding out in my room while I'm in class. Like, anyway, bye. And then V and Kev are at the free clinic so Kev can get an STD test. And I like the way that they're sitting, like, on a corner with kind of their backs to each other, like, sniping at each other in the in the waiting room. Mm-hmm. And the nurse asks him when they get back in the room, how many sexual partners have you had in the last 12 months? And he starts counting on his fingers. On his fingers. <laughs> and it takes a long time. He just keeps counting. It's like... Yeah. So- and- like V's jaw just gets wider. She's like, "What the fuck?" Like, <laughs> it's so good. And he lands on like twenty-two ish, and then he goes, "What? I was the rape walker. I had lots of opportunities." And Kevin, you can't just say things the like that. Just has like such a look on her face. She's like, "Okay." She needs context. You can't just say, "I was the rape walker. I had opportunities." No, cl- no context clarification. <laughs> I was the guy who walked girls home so they didn't get raped. And then they were so seduced by that that they came on to me. (laughs) Uh, But horrified look on the doctor's face. And then we cut away. Meanwhile, at the pharmacy, Debbie is buying both a pregnancy test and plan B. And she just walks up to an aisle and grabs plan B off the shelf. You can't do that. You can't do that anymore. No, you can't. What 2015 shit was that? Back in the day. And then they just restricted Uh, it. I feel like you always needed ID, right? It was always. It's, or this is like, this is why Debbie gets like turned down too. Is that yeah. 
She needs ID, it may, right? It may... No, no, no. She doesn't get turned down. It may be, mm-hmm. like, a recent thing because of all the bullshit, but, like, it's, like, locked yeah. behind they are, the counter well, at the they, pharmacy. They used to be in the lock boxes because yeah. they're expensive. It's, like, 50 bucks a pill or something. Yeah. But I thought at one point you needed ID to buy it. Maybe. Like, like you had to be a certain age. I feel like that's a thing they do with, like, Carl's girlfriend Kelly later where she doesn't... She's oh, not old yeah. enough, and then Carl has to buy it for her or something. Oh, maybe. That is a thing that they do at one point. Like, somebody I... asks someone else to buy them Plan B because they're not old enough. I but maybe in... that happened because the laws changed. True. Maybe. I know in this scene, she, she like, brings both of them up, and he makes, like, a snarky comment at her, and then she, like, snatches condoms off the shelf right next to it and then puts them on the counter yeah. as well. Condoms and gum. Yeah. Right? She's, like, <laughs> she's like covering all my bases, just in case. And because the, the pharmacist looks at the pregnancy test and the plan B and goes, oops, huh? So good. Shut the fuck but up. also, it's like, Debbie, if you're already <laughs> pregnant, what is the plan B going to do for you? Right? But if you're not also, pregnant, then you should take the plan B. So also, it doesn't work if your BMI is above average, quote unquote. Um, like it doesn't work if you're like above, I think, a, like it's a it's a pound number, thirty pounds or something. I think it might be 150. But like that's most people. Yeah. Uh, back in Mexico, a man is plucking a chicken, uh, and he thinks Bianca is Frank's daughter, and then Frank doesn't correct him, and then tries to buy a gun off of him. Because Bianca wants a gun, so right, Frank's well, going to get like, her a cares? gun. Who cares? <laughs> uh, and the guy's like, what kind do you want? He lists, like, you want an AK? You want, like, a whole list of things? He's like, just a pistol. I w- Doesn't he, like, I just pull out, like, a bag of guns? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just lists, like, a laundry list of, what What do you want? What do you- I got everything. Then he sends him over to, like, a guy with a uh, Brazilian soccer jersey on. He's like, go over there. He'll help you out. Uh, the alibi. V is ranting to her mother about Kev fucking around, and her mom points out that, like, why well, you kicked him out? And she's like, lots of girl got daddy issues, and he is one hell of a daddy. Real. Yeah. And then V is mad at her mom for acting like she knows Kevin sexually because she knows Kevin sexually. Stop. We were, we were supposed to forget about that. <laughs> and she says, you'd never let a good looking, good earning, good of the sheets man like Kevin off the leash unless you want him running around the neighborhood sniffing every bitch he sees. Well, it sounds like V, you also went on like dates and stuff. And it's like V. You went on dates. Svetlana went down on you too, yeah. right? Well, it's not. It's it's not just that. It's like V. You were trying to emotionally move on too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you like, didn't. Ju- you didn't just fuck people. Which she, all, the only person she didn't even fuck anybody really except Svetlana. But it's mm-hmm. like you tried to emotionally move on. That's something different. Yeah. Yeah. And her mom mixes about fifteen metaphors to get the point across. And even V is like, "That was a lot. That was a lot of metaphors all at once, Mama." She's like, "Well, if he likes college girls now, dress up like a co-ed or something." And, like, this conversation was so clearly written by a man. Because, like, her mom should be at least a little on her side. Yeah, like, emotionally supportive, bit. not telling her to dress like a fucking, like, stripper. Like, her mom is cold in this. And, like, it's funny. She's got some funny lines. But, like, John Wells, that's not how a mom would, <laughs> would talk to her. Uh, back with Ian and Monica, speaking of moms, they have caught yet... They've caught yet another ride and have arrived at the trailer where Monica lives with her boyfriend. Her maybe 30-year-old shirtless tattooed boyfriend. He is the ex-partner of the late um, Naya Rivera. Yeah, he's the father of her child, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. At Patsy's. So, like, he's he's Naya Rivera's age. He's, like, may, maybe 20. May, in maybe 21. He's young. Uh, 2015? At no, she, they would have been late 20s probably yeah but like dating monica oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> at patsy's sean's on the phone with someone and he's pissed he's fighting with someone on the phone while fiona refills the ketchups and F- she's like across the diner like refilling ketchups eavesdropping and fiona's like hey you want to talk about it and like tries to be a friend and he's like we are not friends and she's like oh sure we are and he's like go home go home to your husband Get the fuck out of my face. Sean's Literally. So over her Sean, bullshit. stay strong. Stay strong, girl. <laughs> Remember who you are. <laughs> Remember your roots. It's like I know, I know how this ends up. I know what happens, but it's like, Sean, stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> at the dorm, Lip comes back. Amanda's still there. She's studying at his desk. She's got cold pizza sitting there because she ordered pizza thinking he'd be back hours ago. Bitch, eat it. Yeah. He she asked, Does Holly make you happy or is it just the sex? And she's like, is she better at sex than me? And he says different 
bad answer. That's never the answer you give. Different, but not better. <sighs> it's and like, then, but it, but it's also like, okay, at least he didn't lie. At least he wasn't yeah. like, no, you're amazing. Because then she would be yeah. like, okay, stop having sex with her then. Yeah. But also, you've been fucking your roommate this whole time, Amanda. Like, yeah, double ah, standard. True, double standard. At home, Leah Liam is watching like a gory as fuck movie, like zombie shit I, in the living room. Did we talk about this some other time? Who is watching a Saw movie at one point? Carl. It's <laughs> Carl, yes. when Jimmy walks in, he's like, Saw, Saw on like a Sunday afternoon or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think it's, it's like Saw 2 or Saw 3 or something, like one of them with a really fucked up trap. Yeah. Yeah, but like he's watching the movie when Fiona comes home at like 10 p.m., and Fiona goes upstairs. She's like, it's your bedtime. And she goes upstairs yelling for Debbie. She walks in the door, yells for Debbie very loud. And she's not being quiet when she walks upstairs, having a yelling conversation like, hey, Debbie, you can't let him watch this gory stuff. Plenty of time announcing her presence in the house. And then she walks in and Debbie and Derek are still in bed actively it like They're kissing like and stuff. It's like, or whatever. Yeah, girl, you didn't hear her. Girl, everyone hears everything in that damn household. I know she you probably didn't, didn't think she'd actually come in. She probably just thought she'd like yell and then walk by. I guess so. Stupid. But yeah, uh, very dumb. And your door isn't locked. Stupid. Derek gets dressed and he's leaving, and he apologizes to Fiona, and he actually he calls her Miss Gallagher. He's like, I'm sorry, Miss Gallagher, which is you know that was polite. He's a sweetie, yeah, but he, then he did right they turn him into a bitch. Kind of. I don't even think Amanda knows about that stuff either. I don't know anything about this man. Whoa, that's so oh, funny. Yeah, he, <gasps> yeah. We don't have. Made we, him kind honestly, of let's not say anything until she finds out because I think that'd be funny. No, yeah. Let's right, let's cool. keep it on the DL. <laughs> yeah, keep it on the DL. Uh, Fiona says she's like Debbie. You cannot have a boy in your bed. And Fiona's like, and she's like, why not? You do. Fiona's like, I'm a grown up. And Debbie goes back, I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's the way they mimic each other is what gets me in the <laughs> scene. It's like I'm a grown up. Well, I'm pregnant. And then it's just like, you, uh. Emmy's face, like, she, sh- shock, shock and awe on her face. She's like, what the fuck did you just say? And, but she is immediately, girl, you're getting a fucking abortion. You're getting an abortion. And Debbie says, no, me and Derek are going to get married and have lots of babies. Why won't you just let me be happy? Because you're, because you're a baby. Because you are <laughs> the baby. Yeah. Stomping your foot. Why won't you let me be happy? Girl. girl you're 14. Uh, you're 13. an eighth grader. She's 15? 13. Girl, you are an 8th grader. Yeah. You're a 7th grader. You're nothing. <laughs> you are nothing. Dude, I was meeting Dan and Phil. Wasn't worried about getting pregnant. I thought she was I thought she was 14. I thought she, she was 14, be 14 because because later Frank's like Deb's 15 with a baby on her hip like talking about Franny. So I th- I think oh. she's 14 and then she okay. turns 15 over the course of the pregnancy. During the the wedding scene? Yes. Okay. Deb's 15 with a baby on her hip. Yeah. I just love when he just out the calling out of everyone. That's so funny. I love that. Dude, scene. hilarious. But he has a gay bipolar or something like that. And it's like, <laughs> yep. You did it, Frank. You dumbed him down to his so You dumbed him down to his simplest part. He's the gay one with all the problems. Literally. There's Ian's oh yeah, that... he's like Ian's a bipolar queer with some 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 Is that season seven when that happens or season no, six? No, it's the end of six, it's the finale. Okay. A pair is getting married and Frank is there and then he literally just goes down the line of all of his And kids he roasts and everybody like, he roasts <laughs> the fuck out of them and it's so oh, funny. And he was anyway, right. back to f- back to fucking. <laughs> it's Bianca and it's Frank having dirty nasty sex in Mexico. And after they finish, she right away asks like she finishes, takes a breath and goes Where's the gun? Like, immediately. She's a baddie, and I love her. She gets it out, loads it with one bullet, and starts playing Russian roulette. And she, like, puts it to her head and fires. She does it and she twice. Tries- yeah. She tries to give it to him, and he says no, so she does it again. And he gets the gun away from her, and it goes off, and it grazes his arm. So now, like, when this- the time that Sammy shot him, he now has matching gun. Sh- he looks at the gunshot wound. And then he looks at his healed one. And then he looks at the fresh one again. He's got matching gunshot <laughs> wounds on his arm. And then he laughs about it. And then she starts crying. And then he holds her. And that's their relationship. It's just <laughs> like a somber scene. It's so crazy. Yeah. Because she, we now understand she wanted this gun so she could kill herself. Yeah. Like, that's why she wants the gun. And then we go back to Ian and Monica. Also, so both so stable. He, he's watch. This might be the scene you were talking about. He's watching TV in the trailer while Monica fucks her boyfriend. And then he, like, no. looks around the trailer. It No, they, um, it was, they're, like, en route to somewhere. They're, they're in the back of, 
a truck and Monica, I think, is sitting up front talking to the trucker and Ian is just kind of like looking around at like the trucker has up like fairy lights oh, in the truck. I think that was, was the earlier part, right? That was yeah. on the way to the diner. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. But yeah, he's like investigating the trailer, like seeing the st- all the shit that's around. And then he walks out to the little shack outside of the trailer and sees, yeah, of course this man is cooking. Yeah, meth. he's the cooker. Walter yeah. White moment. <laughs> like there was meth in Monica's purse. Of course this man is cooking meth. Yeah, of course the he person looks she's like... gating is the drug dealer. Like, are you kidding me? Because if you're like, close your eyes and describe to me a guy that cooks and sells meth, you would describe this man. <laughs> uh, Monica finds him outside and he's like, oh, I'm just, I'm looking at the stars. And he's like, hey, So was that meth in your purse? And she insists that her boyfriend's name is Walter, by the way. She's like, Walter takes care of me and I take care of him. Literally Walter cooking meth. Shaking my head. And yeah, Cameron does this thing when Ian's in a bipolar spiral where his voice goes like up. He gets nasally. He gets like nasally. It gets like childish. He like, he like makes his voice sound more innocent while he's like spiraling. It's like his Jerome voice. (laughs) It's a little bit like his Jerome voice, yeah. And this was around the same time he was doing that, so my, maybe it was instinctual. He was like, "Let me try this out on Ian." <laughs> yeah. Like, but like you could, t- it's like he's f- like his voice goes up. It's like he's floating outside of his body. Like his feet are both clearly not on the ground. I don't know. It's just really interesting. It's a really cool thing he does. Uh, and Ian and the boyfriend, like the boyfriend, comes outside and they start to fight. But Monica like kisses the boyfriend and simmers it down and sends him back inside. And Eve, she- look at me. Remember. This isn't yeah. you. <laughs> remember, remember when we went to the beach? Literally, literally that. Like, hey, hey, it's fine. We're both, we're all tired. We've been, Stop, we were on the me. road all day. Yeah. Look at me, babe. <laughs> babe, look at me, babe, look at me. <laughs> and she tells Ian, I'm happy and people like us can be happy if you find someone to love you, the uh, who loves you for who you are. Your boyfriend cooks meth. You don't have a leg to stand on. Literally. It's like, what if I smacked her in the face? <laughs> yeah. But he need like... He needs her. He, she's his mom. And he hugs her. Because sometimes this boy just needs to hug his mom. Like, he's a mama's boy. For sure. The tragedy of Ian Gallagher. For real. Yeah. Ugh. He's such a mama's boy. Especially because he's also, I would consider him the closest to Fiona at certain points. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Because, like, yeah. her and Fiona and Lip were, like, partners. They, they like, he was the second oldest. They, they had to raise the kids together. But, like, Ian was, like, the, the kid baby. Especially they had to raise. Especially also because, yeah. like, I don't – I know Ian has this whole thing where he, like, is, like, no, like, Frank's my dad, even though he's, like, not my dad. But it's, like, I think he feels that same, like, kinship to Frank that the other ones do where yeah, they look at Frank not. and they're, like, he's my – like, he is my father. He's my biological father at the end of the day. Because Ian can look at him and go, like, yeah, You're he's not bitch. my dad. <laughs> yeah. Like, he ra- – like, he, quote, unquote, raised me. He was my dad. But – He's, he's not, not my dad. Yeah. Like, if I want to be rid of him, I could be. Which brother is yeah. his dad again? Uh, Clayton. That's where yeah. Ian's middle name comes from, too. Oh, yeah. Ian yep. Clayton Gallagher. Yeah. So Ian lays down in the grass and listens to Monica go back inside and, like, fight with her boyfriend. And he sees there's, like, a really upsetting shot of his phone ringing. And he, like, looks at the background. And it's, like, it's that Ian and, or it's that that's Cam and fucking Noel, behind like, the selfie. scenes picture. Yeah. That was of sick them, like, and oh, the one that's, like, all tan or whatever. And it's, like, season three. No, it's them, like, three. making faces. Well, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was, like, an Instagram filter on it or something. So it was it was very Valencia filter. But, <laughs> Valencia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, Mickey's calling and he doesn't pick up. And, like, I, this is actually a nice transition out of the scene. Because Ian doesn't pick up the phone. And then we go to Mickey holding the phone to his ear because he's calling Ian. And uh, like that, like he was calling Ian. That was his last resort. That was like his last shot of like, pick up the phone now, pick up the phone now. And he and he didn't. And so he hangs up and he puts the phone in his pocket and he finds a guy sitting on a bench in a park. And he's like, let's go cupcake. He be cruising. And he, grabs the, he grabs a little twink and they go to hook up. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is <Santa>. interesting. <laughs> Um, I think people theorize or something that like Mickey like t- taking on the dominant role also says something about his reluctance his to move on from Ian because it's like he did that in season twelve or season eleven as well. Yeah, because he was like he was like all top like Byron or whatever. He's yeah, like all top you like obviously you're like femme or whatever. Yeah. So it's just like it's it is kind of his reluctance to like move on from. Yeah. Ian. Like he will only be emotionally and vulnerable like that with Ian. Like Ian yeah. is the only one he quote unquote lets in. Like yeah. He, yeah. 
<laughs> saw what you did there. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say innuendo. It like, and then took a second. This... I had to process it. <laughs> I like was half listening. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, it's innuendo, and then I was gonna make the Scrubs joke in your endo, like, and I just... Oh, <laughs> you should've done it. <laughs> a twofer. Uh, back at home, Fiona is finally telling her husband about her two brothers that were arrested, and the bipolar diagnosis, and the pregnancy. She's finally filling her husband in. Yeah. On what Maybe the fuck is time. going on with her family. Right, well, and then he's like, oh my god, like... He's like, why didn't you tell me? And she's like, oh, I didn't want to bother you on the road. He's like, I'm your husband, I would like to know these inform- this information. Yeah, seriously. Well, and she thanks him for coming over because she was having a meltdown. And he goes, that's what friends are for. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Fucking stake in the heart. And she's like, are we? Is that what we are? We're friends? Were they ever friends? That's the yeah. thing is that it's like they went straight to like being in a relationship. And even like straight into being married. So it's like, were you ever friends? Yeah. Did it you ever develop that friendship friends. alongside your romantic relationship? I don't think so. And then he asked, and then he he's so selfish too. He asks her to come home, meaning his place, as if this house doesn't only have a pregnant fourteen year old and a toddler in it right now. Like, what are we talking about, Gus? Yeah. And she's like, "Well, stay over." And he says, "Well, your bed sucks." And she goes, "I don't have any, haven't had any complaints before." And he's like, "Hey, maybe don't remind me how many guys have been in your bed, Uh girl." Gus, back it the fuck up. Or be so fucking for real right now. Like, no, for real. But it's also like, <sighs> is it bad that I think he was kind of funny for that? <laughs> no, it's Ugh. so good. But like. Like, it's so bad. But it's also like, he did She get has her. children she's legally obligated to take care of. You come to this house. Like. Oh, I. Yeah. I more meant it as like a dig of like, you're a cheater. Like. Yeah. Cheater. Yeah. Cheater. Like, I was like, because I was like, yeah, she's a cheater. <laughs> like. And she's like, he says that the kids shouldn't get too comfortable with him being around because she hasn't decided if she wants to be with him. Like, he tells her that. He's like, you haven't decided yet if you want me to stick around. But yeah, like, Gus tells Fiona, you haven't decided if you want to be with me. And like, girl, she's decided. She has, she's decided. She's not saying it. She likes Sean. Uh, Meanwhile, in Mexico, Bianca is moaning in the sand because her pain is back. Because she has cancer and is dying. And Frank's like, I'm going to go get you your pain pills and some beer to wash it down with. And like I said, for all of his faults, he takes care of his women. Uh, He gives her the pills and the gun was sitting next to her. He takes it away from her. And then she admits she couldn't do it and she was too afraid. And she like lays on his chest and he holds her while they're on the beach. And she thanks him for making her happy. She's like, you let me be happy. and And I... And I'm really thankful for that. And like, damn, shit, damn, like, damn it. I, I kind of really love them. I don't know if I really liked the idea of them together, but I did really enjoy her and their scenes together. And in the morning, Fiona wakes Debbie up and asks, are you sure you're pregnant? And Debbie says she wants to have the baby. And she's like, you are just a kid if you are willing to make a decision that will ruin the rest of your life with the guy you barely know. And Debbie for her to be fair says you married a guy you barely know that was kind of slay of her she does got some good one-liners in this episode she got she you're not in the you're in the wrong but just not about that like (laughs) and fiona's like please do not do this please do not have a baby and debbie's like go fuck yourself like you don't get to make decisions for me in the ball house v is waking kev up in a schoolgirl outfit first of all girl you look hot as hell you look so good um oh we haven't talked about the cast like current projects we'll have to discuss that at the end um she's like what isn't this what the slutty co-eds wore and he's like i don't know some of them wore jeans some of them had sweatpants on what what you asked and she gets (laughs) mad and storms out but yeah she gets mad and storms out which wakes the babies up and like she's in the bathroom lock the door and he's like v let me in and she's like the babies are crying kev go to the babies i know you want to be with the babies go pick up the crying babies they could be dying who knows and he stands there and says no i i want you to come out and talk to me she's like go to the babies and he sits down and then she opens the door she's like god damn it kev and she sees that he was standing there waiting for her instead of running to the baby's side so that they could go and comfort them together which is what she always wanted why wasn't he just like come with me like any of these other times because he's such a helicopter parent but it's like but also V was, like, not interested. Yeah. 
But like that, that was like, that clicked, that snapped everything. She's like, like, yes, they do need to take care of the kids, but they can wait for a minute. For like, and, and it's also like they can do it together. Yeah. They can wait until Kevin V can look each other in the eyes and go like, okay, let's go. <laughs> They're hugging. And she goes, damn, they can scream. <laughs> Back in Mexico, uh, Bianca, this is like a gorgeous golden hour yeah, moment. Like, I can't tell if it's like sunset or sunrise, but it's like only the beach and like her back profile yeah she takes off her like sheer dress cover-up thing and goes down to the water and walks into the ocean and dives and disappears like we hang on the ocean for a minute she never resurfaces and that's, and that's a wrap on bianca that shot was always so crazy to me well because i was like like in a good way but i was also just like did she just like know that she was about to die well she wanted to do it herself like she wanted to, she didn't want cancer but like, to be the way that killed her. True, but also drowning yourself is really fucking hard. Yeah. So yeah. I don't. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe she maybe took she all. Took some of yeah, those I was gonna say maybe she yeah. took all the pain probably, meds, probably, drank a little and bit, just like fell asleep. Yeah, yeah. But oh, pull that's a Kendall so sad. Roy. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's a gorgeous scene. It's really good, and like. What could have been a stupid waste of time storyline was actually a beautiful contribution to the end of the season. Yeah. Like, no, seriously, very poignant. Um, and even I would go as far as saying like what they do with the aftermath is actually really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like where where Frank goes after. Mm-hmm. It's interesting until he gets a little stupid. Mm-hmm. But it's mostly Which good. Is, that is the thesis of this show. I isn't just it? love like it's also just it's also just a byproduct of Frank. Like it's like it's it's just Frank. It's so yeah. funny. They're just like fuck you, Frank. Like he's like I yeah. love you, and Ian's like kill yourself. He like goes go on away. a whole like hippie like, um, like a Buddhism type thing, awakening yeah. and like yeah. starts to like try to redeem himself next season. But yeah. like that's the pitch of Shameless, isn't it? It's interesting until it gets a little stupid. Yeah, until it gets a little dumb. They let the joke ride a little yeah, too long. Yeah, because like this yeah. was so beautiful the way of like how much he like prioritized her and kind of like even though everyone's always on the back burner, they've been more on the back burner in his life than ever. And then for that just to be for him to show all his love and gratitude to them next season, I'm like, shut up, Frank would not yeah. do that. He's not giving a fuck about his family. So yeah, that like Bianca goes to the ocean and we we don't see her again. And we go to Fiona in the morning. Again, golden, beautiful, gorgeous lighting, gray Chicago. Like, stark contrast. Uh, Fiona goes to Gus's place in the, like, cold early morning hours. And someone from his band, it's not the guy she's trying to hook up with, it's, it's somebody in the band, is sitting in Gus's Some apartment. fucking rando. Like, yeah. why? Yeah. This scene kind of pisses me off. I have some thoughts about it after, but yeah. go ahead. He's sitting in Gus's apartment. He's, like, jamming by himself. And she's like, oh, I brought him coffee. And he's like, hey, if you don't love Gus, you have to leave. Because he won't. He's too nice. He'll try. Uh, but you're not nice. <laughs> so you have to leave. Read her. That's da- that is like kind of, that makes me like mad on Gus's behalf. Because I'm like, Gus doesn't respect himself enough to cut off this relationship then. Yeah. Is what I hear. Yeah. Is I'm like, Gus knows that Fiona doesn't love him and yet will pour himself out anyway to her or just like fall at her knees kind yeah. of when he knows it's not going to work. It's like, girl, stand up. Remember who you are. <laughs> like, yeah. You're, she is not, you are not worth this. It's like, you don't actually have to stick to a commitment that you made after knowing her for three days. Like you, you can call it a bad pancake. Like just, it's a bad first marriage and move on. Don't torture each other like this. Uh, but Frank wakes up in Mexico he like it's like kind of cool. We just, we just kind of stay in the hut, and he gets up and he goes just outside the front door and he pisses off the front porch, and then he comes back in and there's two notes next to the beer and the pills. One says, "Frank, please give this to my family." Let's be real, that note is never getting to her family. Nope. And the next, yeah, the one next to the pill says, "There's nine left. Enjoy." I don't think I ever saw that part with the second note. I don't think I ever caught that. Yeah, she's like. Here's a gift from me to you. I don't need him anymore. Go nuts. Not, there's nine left. That's her yeah. present to him. Doesn't he like just immediately take one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. He sees the note and he's like, knows what that means. And he checks for the gun and it's still there. And so he runs down to the water and he sees her clothes and he starts like screaming for her. And then when he sinks to his knees in the sand, he goes, not today. Like, oh, Bill. Damn. What the fuck? Also, I love this note afterwards. 
No, uh, I was right. I thought that was so funny. I was like, that's so real. Like, of course. <laughs> the note says, the note says, in case Lena hasn't already said it by this point, let's go ahead and say Mexico looks good on Bill Macy. He keeps it tight for 60. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Too real, was- too real. <laughs> yeah. Le- he does. He looks good. Yeah, he does. He's yeah. I believe that he's fifty in this. He's he keeps it tight. Like I said, Bill- William H Macy's like I'm tired of being dirty and grimy and cold all the time. I want to be showered and on a beach. beach like yeah. Uh, back to college. Lip walks into I think the library and Amanda is there waiting for him. Pissed that he like while she was in his dorm last night, she went to microwave the pizza and he just fucking left. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah yeah yeah. She's like, you ditched me. And then she decks him right in the fucking face and yells at him for making her fall in love with him. And he's like, I didn't make you do anything. She's like, you're just you. And like, and then she has like the stupidest fucking backpack on too. Remember, it's like a very like. It's like Hello Kitty or something, yeah, right? It's like some yeah. like pink fucking just like, oh my God, it looks like a kindergartner backpack. I respect her. I don't care. I respect I just, her. But I'm like, girl, for you to cause such a commotion and stomp out with that backpack on your back, shut up. <laughs> But also love- this this next part is so funny is literally a Tumblr post moment. But like this moment with him of her like, fuck you for making me fall in love with you and him going like, I didn't do anything. That's just the internet and the bear. Like, <laughs> fuck you. He's like, I'm just existing. I don't know I'm what you, here. I, don't, I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and she storms at the library. The whole library claps. Everybody's just clapping because it was because that was funny. <laughs> no, seriously, Tumblr post moment. And then everyone clapped because <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like some fucking like improv scene or something like that. No, I think they just liked the drama. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you I, like but that was a cool thing about college, like sitting in the, the cafeteria. Every once in a while, somebody would get a little loud. You'd be like, oh, what's going on over there? Let's just watch for a minute. <laughs> Um, at the diner, Fiona comes in before open, still super early in the morning. She comes in before open and asks Sean, like, point blank, what's going on with them? And he's like, you're married. And she's like, I think you're in love with me. Or she's like, no, I think I'm in love with you. And I think you're in love with me too. And he says he doesn't want to be the guy sleeping with the nice guy's wife. And that if she and Gus split, it can't be because of him. And then she kisses him. Well, it's like, no, they split because they got married after a week. Yeah. (laughs) And she already cheated. It had nothing to do with yeah. you, dude. Yeah. John was just they're, so they're splitting because she cheated there. with Jimmy. Yeah. But that's the thing, too, is that I'm like, to be honest, like, Sean. Yeah. You know that she cheated on her husband. Yeah. How do you know she's not going to cheat on you? I know, he's seen her be like, so Like, messy. she doesn't, but it's like, how do you know? Like, yeah. she's you been know? so messy with two men she he has witnessed, and he's like, In let me snatch him, that yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because he's a chaos junkie. Know, and then comes to him, then she comes to him for advice, and he gives it to her, and she so. kisses him, and he kisses her back, like he kisses her back. Ugh, she got to keep then, those lips closed, both of them. Until sorry, they kiss in, until someone from the staff knocks on the door. Worth noting that when we pull away to like the shot of Fiona, there's cooks just in the kitchen. Like people saw that. Like people heard that. That's so saw funny. That. <laughs> like, are you serious? I'm so dumb. You work here. <laughs> And Have she, some decency. <laughs> but she tells Sean, you make me happy. And I'm happy when I'm around you. And he's like, happiness is fucking overrated. And then he opens the door and lets the staff in. Like, Jesus. Oh, my God. That line was biting, though, when he's like, grow up, Fiona. It's like, oh. yeah, Damn. real. <laughs> and like, that's the enduring theme of this episode. Like, Monica is happy with Walter. Frank made Bianca happy. Debbie is happy with Derek and Fetus. And Fiona is happy around Sean. Like the pattern of reckless sex and destructive happiness. Not subtle. Not subtle. Right. It's like what makes you happy will fucking get you. Yep. Like happiness can't like, like that brief moment can't sustain you. Right. Uh, but then. Speaking of things that can't sustain, I am. Well, it's also like, but then the like one couple that denies themselves happiness time and time again is yeah. the one that endures this so i think i let's just talk about this so here's the thing with this scene so for the i don't know if you were like on twitter watching it Mm-mm. like the whole time i so, don't think i was on twitter i think i was on tumblr so while time. this episode was airing 
the cast, like, they typically every episode did, like, hey, let's live tweet. And, like, it's usually one or two of them. During the finale, it was everybody. It was everybody from the cast was actively live tweeting about every joke, every line, everything. The whole time. Until this scene. Because they were like, scene, sorry. <laughs> because they were like, scene, we know they're not going to like no, that no, one. <laughs> they did not know this scene was going to happen. This scene was rewritten and reshot. Only oh, Cam and yes. Noel knew this scene was going to happen. Holy shit. Because didn't, yes, be- didn't they film a different ending? Because yes, it was, they filmed it, a different ending. It was ending. up in the air about Noel's schedule with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. It wasn't the schedule. It was money. It was him wanting money. to be a regular. It's, it was him wanting to be a regular and him wanting to be paid like a regular and they said go fuck yourself and so and he like, was like okay i will leave then <laughs> yeah and do you know who told us that there was a different scene written that he knew there was a different scene written j michael troutman <laughs> he, was, he was the guy he is so on- funny for that because it's also like girl how do you know yeah but you like, were not in j- the episode <laughs> like iggy oh, okay yeah no that is so funny because it's like how do you know yeah. but like you know and just like chat just being like dude i can't believe this beeping. Except, like, Noel's notorious for not being a good texter. <laughs> but, like, just like in the season four finale, when, like, Jimmy pulls up in the in the credit scene oh, and everybody yeah. on the cast is like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Like, they had no idea. This, they went dead silent. And no, they just never addressed it. None of them ever addressed it. They were it. like, um. Yeah. <laughs> they just said, damn, I guess we're not um, going to see Noel anytime no, soon. No, literally, they were like, really good episode, guys. Like, what do you think about that one? And that's because this is the same thing that happened with, with like, Destiel. Like, you could clearly see the moment when the script changed. Like, the mo- like all season, and even this whole episode, it was building up to, like... It was Ian, building up to a Ian reunion. was watching Monica run away, and, do like, he wanted to get away from his life, and he was following Monica. He's like, let's go. She understands me. Let's go be happy oh shit, the things that she does is actually really destructive and I can't live like this. And it was all leading back to him coming back and like starting a healthy life with Mickey and like understanding that he had made mistakes. And instead they went even more destructive with it. Well, and that's why it was so weirdly abrupt when season six started and Ian was like on his meds when this whole beef was about Ian being like, I'm not... I'm not going to be medicated. Like, I'm not going to do that. And then season six started and suddenly he's like on his meds, doesn't really have a problem with that. Yeah. More so he's just just frustrated with the fact that treatment isn't like progressing how he wanted it to be. But there's no thought of like, oh, I'm going to stop treatment. You know, like this literally came out of no, it made no sense with the trajectory of the season. It made no sense with the trajectory of the episode. It came out of nowhere. And it was being on Twitter that night was insane because everybody in the fandom is like they all just shut up they all just stop talking what the fuck is going on that is so funny john (laughs) wells is probably john wells was probably like that scene in mean girls when regina george is watching everybody freak out in the hallway (laughs) like it was oh my god it was batshit crazy because even the scene at the end of this hold on let's get to it okay it was so stupid it was the whole thing was like shoehorned it was dumb but like mickey's phone rings it's ian and he answers, the fuck are you? And then he runs to the Gallagher house the same way uh, that Ian ran to the Milkovich house when Monica came back for the first time. They shot it the same. It's like, yeah. ugh. The way God. they swing around the gate up to this front porch, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Like, I, I talked talk about the Twitter stuff. Ian tells Mickey that he's been with Monica. He hates the meds. And are you going to want to be with me if I don't take them? And, me, and Mickey's like, you act fucking crazy when you don't take them. Like, you need to take them. Right? He's like, it's not about me. It's about you. Yeah. Like, you almost like, took your sister's head off with a bat. Like, I don't know what you want from me. He's like, I can handle it. I can do whatever. But, like, you are hurting yourself. Yeah. And then Mickey's Ian says, you used to love me. Now you don't even know who I am. I don't know who I am half the time. This is the whole script of the scene. And Mickey says, you don't... Or he says... To, to Mickey, you don't owe me anything. And then for the first time to his face, Mickey says, I love you. That's like he said it on the phone. This is the first time he ever says it to his face, is in this scene. He says, I love you. <laughs> the way you said it, stop. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> uh, no, his like voice stop. breaks. It's like, I he love he you. really does put yeah. like serious emphasis on that. His eyebrows go up. He's like, sh- his like voice is like shaky. It's like intense. Yeah. And then Ian asks, what the hell does that even mean? And Mickey says, it means we take care of each other. Ian says, 
I don't want you sitting around worrying, watching me, waiting for me to do my next crazy shit. And Mickey just barrels on and says, it means thick and thin, good times, bad, sickness, health, all that shit. And Ian asks, are you going to marry me? We're going to go down to the courthouse in some tuxes, like a couple of queens. And Mickey's like, like he said that to hurt Mickey. And Mickey goes, fuck you. And Ian says, no, thanks. I already done that. Like, oh, God. not even funny. Not even a good comeback, didn't to be laugh, honest. Didn't laugh. Yeah. I'm getting like, I'm getting like war flashbacks from this right yeah. now. But it's also like season three, Ian would have eaten that up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Season, and season asks, four, Ian would have eaten that up. He would have been like, so you want to marry me? Like, okay. <laughs> like, where's the ring on my yeah. finger? Where's my ring, girl? Mickey asks, the hell is wrong with you? And Ian says, too much. Too much is wrong with me. That's the problem, isn't it? Too much is wrong with me and you can't do anything about it. You can't change it. You can't fix me because I'm not broken. I don't need to be fixed, okay? I'm me. And then it's dead silent. And then Mickey goes, this is it. This is you breaking up with me. Like, fuck. And like, even when he said, like, even in that conversation, the first time I was watching the scene, when he said that, I was like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? No, yeah, that, that was a, that was a hard line to have to spit out. The whole Ian ran about like, you can't fix me. I'm not broken. I kind of have to roll my eyes a little at it. Like, I just know, like, even if that line was in the original scene, I just know there was a killer response from Mickey. I just know there was a speech. Mickey would be like, there was an Emmy worthy speech in there. Well, he was probably, he'd just like, I mean, because it's like, so, so yeah, am I. Ian spent this like, whole, like, past couple of episodes. We have two episodes. fucked up crazy families. Like, come on. He's been trying not to have this pity party thrown for him this entire goddamn season. And for him just to be like, well, I'm broken. Nobody wants me. Like, no, bro. Everyone actively this entire time has been supporting you and looking out for you for you just to turn right, your well, back then it's, on it all. Then they, they do stay true to that later when they're, like, having their fight before they get engaged. Where he's like, he's like, I like, why do you love me? Like, I don't need, I'm up, I'm down, like, whatever. And Mickey's like, but this, but this is when it's like the right response where he's like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. Like, yeah. all the shit I've done for you and you really are yeah. like questioning that? Yeah. That was the response that probably was supposed to go here. Yeah. And even, but even this, like, the you can't fix me because I'm not broken, I don't need to be fixed. It doesn't make sense with the trajectory no, it doesn't of this make sense. episode because he it doesn't watched make sense. Monica say those things to him and then be a meth dealer with her like twenty year old boyfriend. Like, and he, you saw that that was a fucked up situation, and that's why you left. Yeah. So I don't understand. Well, it's I also don't understand. Like, you know that he was never trying to like fix you. He's just as fucked up. Like it's it, that's the whole thing is that it's like you are both fucked up, and they were fucked up together. But it's like it's just like. You know that that's not ever what your dynamic was. Yeah. So was to say it is just that. like, right. This scene is why watching the Supernatural finale made me feel like a fandom elder. Because I was like, ah, yes, I've seen Literally, I was like, before. I was like, this doesn't even phase me, bitch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can only sit back and laugh. <laughs> I've seen this stupid bullshit writing before. Uh, and they break up. And then out of stage fucking left comes Sammy screaming with a fucking gun in her hand she's Ian not goes, funny for that i'm sorry where'd she now get the that gun from? distance from the event when she's talking she's like mickey <laughs> yeah because even mickey's like oh my god she's got a gun like what's well, hilarious she literally she's in the same outfit as she was when they put her in that box so she literally got out of the box and just went to get a gun she didn't even stop and then inside fiona and v like fiona and v are in the kitchen fiona goes you think i'm a bad person and then gunshot like <laughs> right it's like yeah <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> and they go outside and Sammy is chasing Mickey, who was just dumped by the love of his life with a fucking gun while she's taking shots at him. And Fiona and V come outside to Ian and Fiona's like, oh my God, Ian. <laughs> and then she's like, what the fuck is going on? And he's like, oh, Mickey tried to kill Sammy. Sammy's trying to kill Mickey. Something about her being in a box for a week. And like, th- even that, even him coming back to the backyard and like acting like that around them doesn't make sense with what just happened up front Mm -mm. doesn't make any sense any sense at all and it's just like the ending okay the ending here feels so like abrupt where in past seasons the ending has always been kind of a slow fade out because they always had that mentality of like just in case we don't get picked up again or something there was always some sort of resolution or at least the episode felt like a like a finale, like an ending. It didn't feel like it was leading to something else. Yeah. This feels so abrupt. Mm-hmm. Like literally just cut to black. Yeah. No fade out. Cut to black. 
Why? Yeah. <laughs> Debbie giggling over her like positive pregnancy test, and then yeah, that's like it. I said, they go. We go inside where Debbie is taking a pregnancy test, and she goes, "Oh shit, oh shit," because she's pregnant. And then cut to credits. And then there's a couple, like, instances of after credit scene. There, It's Ian and Lip in the van in the backyard. Lip says, I think I'm falling in love with my professor. And then Frank comes home, takes a hit off their joint, and goes, she's gone, boys. She's gone. How the fuck did he get back? <laughs> right? don't, don't they start Don't they start laughing? <laughs> don't yeah. they start laughing at him? That's funny. No, that's really good. And then to Juvie, where Carl and Chucky go head to have in Juvie with their respective gangs. And then that's it. And the credit song is Going Out Fighting by Minutes Till Midnight. It is kind of also a slap in the face that they really tried to, like, sneak that comedy in there at the end. Yep. Because I don't feel like they've tried to do that in past finales either. Like, they've never tried to crack a joke as the last scene. Yeah. But again, this was a season... Maybe maybe season four was the first season where they were comedy. But, like, this is a season where they were labeled as a comedy. And it was, like, without a doubt, the darkest season they have ever had. Like, that Bianca storyline was fucking terrifying. Oh, my God. When she, like, tried to kill herself, the ball to my septum just fell on the ground. So no. I am looking for it, by the way. But I'm still listening. To- listening. But, like, that's, that's the finale. Oh, no. <laughs> and with that, the last full season that I ever watched until season 10. Damn. Literally everyone booed. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I actually do want to see what the IMDb rating is. But for like that's this I checked it's actually pretty high. But like that's how upsetting Probably this was. Probably because it was dramatic. As a fan, that's how upsetting this episode was to watch because I was obsessed with this show, wrote a thesis about this show, would talk to everybody who would listen to me about the show. I didn't watch a full season for 5 years after this. It has an 8.2 out of 10. But let's see that in comparison to the other episodes this but, season. But, like, be- except for the end, it's a good The Shameless good Finale episode. having a 6.5 is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like, the series finale. Oh, my God. Because the series okay. finale wasn't even a good episode. Like, except for the end of this episode, it was a good episode. You floated so away on a bar stool. You call that a good ending? It is the, it is the lowest rated episode of the season. This one? Probably of the series. No, 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 no. This finale, the season five finale, is the lowest rated episode of the season. Everything else has an 8.3 or above. The highest rated episode is Crazy Love with a 9.1. Yeah. What, it's a what great rating does episode. this episode have? 8.2. Everything else has an... The first two episodes have 8.3s, but that's because, like, we were just starting. Everything else sits, like, comfortably above 8.6. Like, 8.5 and above. Yeah. And then the because, highest rated episode is Crazy Love 9.1. Yeah, because season five had bangers, like banger after banger after banger. Banger after banger after banger. This is also in comparison with the se- season four finale of Lazarus has a 9.4 rating on IMDb. Jesus. So it's like, girls, like, like we like we flopped on that one. Let's. I'm so curious. I'm looking at the other ones now. Season six finale has an 8.9. It was really fucking good. Season six finale. Okay. Season seven finale has a 9.2. Jesus. And honestly, not uh, the episode before, the penultimate episode was more dramatic. Um, the season seven finale, the Mexico one? Yes, but but episode 11 is when Ian leaves Mexico. Got it. Got it. Got it. Season eight finale also has an 8.2, but that's mm-hmm. when the show really started to go downhill for me. Yeah. Um, Nine has... A 9.0, but that's Fiona's departure. Yeah. What does 10 have? Because that's Galovich. 8.9. Ooh. And then 11 has the 6.5. That's so fucking sad. Oh, God. And it was, it was terrible. Remember when, person remember when he this. floated up to the sky and he was a ghost? And, like, the man who directed this directed that. Like... Goddamn. I, I don't know what else to say about this. I, like... It, I like, hate like I Shameless. Said, I got the same feeling watching the ep- season uh, 15, episode 19 of Supernatural that I get watching this episode. There's a certain point where you're like, and that's when you made a change in the script. And that's when different choices started to get made and you started rewriting stuff. Like, you can feel it. Yeah. The energy shifts. Making Mickey wear that wig is like me getting stabbed by that iron peg mm. in the wall. Like Dean did. Literally, Dean dying on that piece of rebar. Yeah, God, Mickey having to wear drag is my Dean death. 
and still looking kind of slaying but no, Nikki really good. Like it, was, it, it was really just like a cheap i feel like because it's like there's nothing there's nothing embarrassing about like putting him in drag or whatever but the fact that they did it within that context is like really really yeah just kind like, of a cheap, sh- though cheap I will shot say, i will say the wig that he puts on still better than the one that jar piss is wearing in the supernatural finale stop the gray Ew. one not that wig stop you're making me laugh did jared get canceled again <laughs> yeah he's a probably fucking worst. <laughs> that's dude so it's like every couple weeks yeah well, they did JibCon, which is run by the girl that wants to fuck them uh daniella who doesn't invite women to the convention oh yes and for a while just, didn't invite their just wives in bellow. what just in bellow just in bellow JibCon. Yeah. oh it's i just run by this girl daniella that uh, doesn't like their wives to be there. And then she was getting the smoke this weekend about like, hey, you didn't invite a single fucking woman from the cast. And so they like last minute added autos with Jared's wife. And she like- cl- She was in she was, two like, episodes. We don't yeah. care. Very she was weird. like clearly wearing like his pants, like had not packed clothes for a convention because this was such a last minute. Oh shit. They pointed out that I didn't invite any women because she wants to fuck Jensen and Jared. Like she she believes she will fuck Jensen and Jared. She's crazy. Well, it's also like, girl, move on. Move on. It's been 10 <laughs> years. Come on. Yeah. But any hoozles, I'm Anyways, upset about this. I hate this. this episode. Next season hate it. is entertaining. Well, here's the thing is I didn't hate the episode. Like, it's a good episode. Yeah. With a bullshit ending. Yeah. Right. It's but literally it just the ending it. that brings it down. I, I also did look at every finale. It is the, it, it is tied with season two as the lowest rated finale. What was season two's finale? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Not season two. Season Eight was that the one that was eight point two? Yeah, it's tied with season eight as the lowest rated finale. What happened? Season the end of two's season finale eight? is is Ian joining the army. That's yeah. the end of season. No, no, two. no, no, no. That's three. No, season, season two's finale. Oh right, yeah. Season two is Monica in the hospital. That has an eight point eight. That's not. Yeah, I am curious of what the lowest rated episode, other than the finale, is like in the whole season. Like does or in the whole series, does anything have like a seven? Yeah, a couple of them have sevens. Yeah, season in, ten has yeah. a, has lots of sevens. <laughs> season of ten does, does not have a lot of great episodes. Season nine has a couple sevens. Um, like the fact I don't know why they never pivoted back to being a drama. I don't know if it's because they didn't want to compete with Game of Thrones or or something i don't know like, it doesn't even matter because they didn't even win any comedy emmys anyway yeah like it's like you guys know that you're not gonna Joan and they is also the only person from the show to ever win an emmy they literally just it's it wasn't even like like the comedy shift was so abrupt too that they made it look cheap yeah yeah like the way they filmed it then started making it not look like a showtime like crown jewel show because yeah. that was like one of showtime's grading. like most promoted shows yeah Oh, speaking of shows uh, that have great ratings, it's the, like, press embargo on The Bear It has been lifted. It just lifted. It yep. just lifted. And, you know, the the lack of scathing, oh my god, season two flop reviews is astounding. Like, this is gonna be an Emmy fucking season. This is gonna be a, a batshit crazy, What do you like, mean? What was that term you meant that it was released or whatever so so like the the press gets to see the episodes early oh yes but they're not allowed to release their articles until a certain point before like the it's release like a of couple days before the premiere because they they bring hype gotcha. to the premiere and that is normally when like if something sucks like of that's when you. the embargo like, gets lifted know. that's when it happens that hasn't happened which means it's going to be a great fucking season i'm so excited i saw i watched the jennifer coolidge um jeremy uh video that was the awesome. actors on actors um and i i saw they were talking a little bit about what this next season will entail and i'm i he did say something that kind of stuck out to me is that we did notice in the promo that there seems like he is like meeting up with someone that he might have had a past relationship with or whatever but he says in the interview i don't know if it was like picked up on but he was like yeah he tries it but it doesn't really work out that well so at least we know we're not going to be bombarded with this like carmy girlfriend huge annoying storyline this season because i yeah because yeah. i love I'm the show hoping... being versed in what happens in the kitchen not what happens outside of the kitchen yeah. i agree the only like possible relationship that i think i would accept would be uh sydney and carmy yeah i don't want that <laughs> i'm sorry yeah <laughs> Agree. Uh, we agree to disagree. That's <laughs> okay. the thing is, is I'm like, 
I wouldn't say I want it, but if something has to happen, I would like it to, to be the two of them. Yes. I do like the concept, like, in a show that is, like, about rebuilding yourself of, like, an old girlfriend coming back to me, like, I knew you then, let's let's meet you now, like, of, of at least the character getting to see the contrast in themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, am I the person that you knew back in the day? Have I changed yeah. for the better? Mm-hmm. For the I like I like that dynamic with that kind of relationship. I mean, it was, it is just interesting that they have that considering that Carmi does say himself in that like monologue that he like never had, he never had girlfriend, like never dated, didn't have time for Mm -hmm. anything except cooking. So it's like. Cause she could have been like the girl that got away, like the high school crush, the the girl, the girl he never like went after that they were always like, maybe they were always dancing around each other, something like that. But I, oh, Shinola also has her show coming out soon, right? Yeah. The one we all thought was dead in the water. Yeah. um, Because I saw the promo. Well, because it's got Mark Paul Gossler in it. And he's like network TV king. But no, because I I did see the promo picture for that. And I posted it on Twitter. And I was like, mother quake. (laughs) (laughs) 9.9 on the country scale. (laughs) On the country scale. Because she looks so good. I do think Steve's show got canceled, right? It did. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a yeah. shit ton of shows got canceled. Well, dude, also the CW, of the, writers yeah, the CW purged everything and are investing in a already produced and complete show about Jesus. Because they what they they killed. Okay, stealing the righteous gemstones fire. No, like, no, no, it's like it's like a it's like a man who plays Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they killed. I know Walker I heard about ended, but they had like the Walker like prequel. Independence got killed. Uh, so I think Winchester's I, is done for already. Winchester's, Winchester's is, is done. done. Gotham Knights, Gotham is, Knights done. is done. Oh, uh, poor uh, Misha. They literally canceled everything except Walker, and that's for an abbreviated final season. That's stupid. And, oh, they kept the Superman show. They kept the Superman show, but they fired seven of the lead characters. Isn't the CW bankrupt? Wasn't that something going around a while ago? It's It got purchased by a super right-wing Christian conservative company. Uh, so that's why it's going to be golf and shows about Jesus now. Real. Okay. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I guess, I don't know. Whose line is it anyway growing up and now I have to watch a <laughs> Jesus show? I'm think. well, HBO owns Whose Line now. Oh, good. But I'm thinking that whatever the stuff that was on the cw is going to move to like kind of like like the type of shows i think it's going to move to like freeform now like abc freeform yeah Mm. well also hbo owns doom patrol which is in the same universe as like all of like the arrowverse um so it's because it's all dc stuff right because they have peace peacemaker too so like unless the cw had like a contract that said it can't move like batgirl could find a new life like the hbo is kind of stumbling though yeah they don't really know what to do without without their like prestige dramas and this sam levinson show is really flopping oh the idol and they've also been like quietly deleting a lot of their catalog especially animation just like taking it off streaming so they're stumbling especially with this this move to like being called max is now just ridiculous Stupid. they also they also sort of ignited fire in the like with the writer strike going on when they moved to max they listed directors and writers and everybody and the showrunners all as creators just yeah. like creators yeah the show. and the dga and, was like, like what the yeah. fuck is that well because they might also well the, actually they renegotiated right before the writers did they so haven't I don't- uh, like signed the contract yet they're still like voting to whether or not so they could still go on strike they could it's not likely at this point but it that it might only pass by the thinnest of margins that could still put a fire under the wga and the sga is gonna strike like they're gonna the sag sag after yeah that's it that's what was my next question was if they're gonna strike yeah, yeah. i'd i see that yeah because like the, they well, voted with they voted on whether or not they would strike and it was like a 98% yes we would lots of actors are going to start podcasts then yep but until and the, and uh, this is important is going to go on tour probably Woo-hoo! when we i pull the, up to the show and sit in the front row what we then? got Shanola's new show soon i think and mm-hmm. then we've got the bear so excited cameron's then, just thriving off of his video game that came out a couple months ago and good for Yeah, him. it's actually doing really yeah, well. No, it's, yeah. Dude, I, the fan base for it is awesome. 
Star Wars is They're die really hard. really strong for him. Except and Mandalorian his, fell off quick, but like the game, his fan base that, is that good. fucking commercial with him and Mark Hamill always shows up for my YouTube videos, and it's so, so funny and so good. So I just, good. I just know that he found out he was going to do that with Mark Hamill. Was like, no, no, but I'm in a Star Wars thing, and I was the Joker. So what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that I'm going to meet Mark Hamill? Like, I just know he was geeked. I, I feel it in my bones. <laughs> He's like, can we like get coffee or something? Can we hang yeah. out? <laughs> um. Yeah, I could see him. See, I I do really love that he got this like. I love that we're just like talking forever now. Yeah. But well, because no one has to pee. Um, I do. <laughs> I do. Have to pee. That's so true. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll wrap it up a little quick. I do love that he got this like video game job because I feel like stunting and like like very physical like. It work that you have to commit to i feel like he's always been into he, it yeah. feels like he, like he loves a role where he has to like get in shape or like he gets more into character because he's physically doing what the character's doing versus just like oh yeah i, I feel like Here's he loves story. committing long term to a project yeah so good for him i'm glad that he gets to do this because yeah, he did all like the motion cap for this fucking video game. mocap and which means he had mo- to he had to do some of the stunts and then he also did like, um i was gonna say the vocals the freaking voiceover yeah i mean learn how to use the lightsaber and all that stuff like it's just, yeah he also is not stupid and likes money and star wars is money, money baby oh star wars is money i also wait in that like uh jeremy allen white uh thing the interview he said something about walking around chicago and people yell yes chef at him and i was like i love that he's getting this recognition for the bear he was also on a hit television show for a decade also set in chicago like people are acting like this is his first big thing like he wasn't one of the leads yeah on but what can you what can you yell at him that's lip related like no but like no i just mean like the general media being like oh my god jeremy Allen oh. white is a big star i'm like yeah he led shameless for like many years he carried that <laughs> yeah, show yeah. well him him years. and emmy like carried <laughs> that show yeah i mean <laughs> I was like, it's it just makes me crazy when people are like, oh my god, the guy from the bear. I'm like, it's that's Lip Gallagher. I don't. I did. <laughs> I did love the tweets that were like, Jeremy Allen White, a native New Yorker, when he's asked to play a Chicagoan, and it's the video of it's like, mm, I'm about to eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we've giggled it out because that episode made me sad. Um, now I'm hungry and I have to pee, and yeah. I'm gonna just commiserate about the <laughs> fucking finale. And then, oh, God, next season's going to be I'm so excited for you, Amanda. Yeah, I'm pumped. Oh, my God. We're going on, like, two hours now. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, this, editing, Our longest Amanda. one in a while. A longest one in this a while. This is our 45-minute episode, and we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, that was quick. Uh, happy Pride Month, everybody. Uh, uh, we love you all. a long episode. I know we only do, like, one episode a month now, but we literally started recording season five a year ago. Um... <laughs> um that's crazy. Shut areas. the fuck up. No, we did it. Sorry. Who said that? Uh, <laughs> Dude, we literally, yeah, literally one yeah. episode a month. <laughs> but then, but then I think about how much stuff I've done this past year, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. But I feel yeah. like we've now wrapped up classic Shameless. Like Shameless comes in waves, and like we've wrapped up classic Shameless, and now we're going into like a new era, new territory. That, yeah, it's like yeah. the next the next two seasons are like it's still good, but it's not classic. And then after that, I'm like. It's the slow decline. It's boring. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll watch like two episodes at a time at one point and be like, let's just get through this. <laughs> yeah. But I will at the same time, they're jam packed. So they're still pretty eventful, even if the storylines aren't as in they're like engaging stupid. as yeah. they used to be. All right. Well, All right. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And it's, you know, we'll get to it eventually. And it'll happen. We've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we do 11 again. We've got six seasons left, y'all. Wow. We've done we've done six. We've got six left to go. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> all right. Uh, until next time, everybody. Right. Thank you for listening to us all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.